Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the first episode of the third season of Overlord. That's right, we're back with another season of Overlord. Now, what happened in the last season? Uh, a lot, really. But I'd say it could be summarized pretty much as fighting against the evil of the Eight Fingers, as well as playing with lizards. I think that's a pretty good summary of last season. Now, this season, I am curious what this season will cover. I would assume we would get into some Baharuth Empire stuff because we haven't done much of that. It's mostly been about the slain theocracy uh, as far as, you know, people we're dealing with. But uh, yeah, it's, that's the only real assumption I have. I haven't read the source material, material or anything, so I wouldn't really have any real basis to make an educated guess beyond that. So, but yeah, I love Overlord. I'm really excited to get back into it. So let's do that. Three, two, one, play. We actually are starting with our overlord himself this season. True enough. They did. Oh, right, yeah, she's supposed to work as maid here, wasn't she? Oh, cool. I knew he was a great boss to work for. Uh, yeah, you should be selfish at least once in a while when you have done something to warn a reward. Oh, of course, it's again for someone else. I think you missed the point a bit, but it's fine. Sounds good. Uh, that shit became a thing last season. And yeah, which solution kind of want uh, to kill Tsuwara? I feel like you have less than less than noble reasons for that. And if I didn't know her, I would think something different from that request. Oh yeah, she worked hard last season too. Apparently it's Christmas because we're just giving out presents to all the good boys and girls now. <laughs> uh, kill that brat. Okay, yeah. Uh, I got gotcha, you, evil eye. I probably could have guessed that if season two was more fresh in my head. Oh yeah, opening. What's our opening gonna be like this season? Like it so far. Gotta have our plenty maids. It's not a proper opening without them front and center. I'll bet it was horny as always. Chaltier is adorable as always. The best chair. <laughs> uh, it's great to be the Overlord. I've missed you, Princess. Goblins! A little bit terrifying. Ah, <laughs> uh, I hate that I forget his name. <laughs> the Chuni guy. <laughs> There's a lot of characters in this show, okay. <laughs> We all know who the most powerful is. That... I'm not sure how it ranks as far as the other openings go, but that was a really good opening. 
Definitely in the top three of the show. Oh god, it's so weird seeing him without clothes. Weird, weird variety of fan service, but I'm sure it's somebody's thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure they are, especially if slam girls are involved. <laughs> I enjoy your bath. You deserve it. <laughs> of course, you wouldn't have to breathe. So couldn't you just be completely out of the water? <laughs> Man, if he wasn't a skeleton, this would be quite lewd. Indeed. I was waiting for one of the girls to show up. Wow. It's not a proper anime unless one of the other important characters spies on other characters on a date. He does look less intimidating without his usual attire. <laughs> yeah, that'll totally come to plat pass. Something up? <laughs> I would say so. Ah, okay. Man, that's... Well, we would just have to put it back, it'd be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I knew which one she was talking about. <laughs> There's not a lot of villages that are relevant. I would imagine so. What's wrong? Uh, <laughs> it's easy. So what? <laughs> Ouch. Uh, I mean, I... I have mixed feelings. Part of me is jealous, part of me is not. <laughs> so that's how I should not snuck up on them. Shouldn't, shouldn't break promises. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> They're cute. Ouch, okay, I think you may have slapped a bit too hard. Uh. This should be, uh, something. Eight Edge Assassins? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> uh, it's it's fine. Very Well, they're not really NPCs anymore, that's kind of the thing. Which complicates matters. Is that who he's looking for? Okay, uh, um, like Shaltier? I can see that going in, in an interesting direction. Yeah, he's busy, alright. Uh, okay. Sure, I don't see why we wouldn't have those. Oh, it's really is with Shaltier. 
and Mata. <laughs> it does look pretty cool. Huh. I kind of want one now. I mean, yeah, like, like a name, not a species name. It makes it easier. Easier to bond. Easier to refer to him. Who? <laughs> but I do. Oh, I guess I would explain that. <laughs> I don't. I don't see the problem. Uh, there's that loyalty you mentioned. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Clearly, because Heinz is the one she really wants to mount and ride the top of the world. <laughs> yeah, what do you have possibly have to complain about? You're being ridden by Alberta. Maybe she's too heavy. Oh wow, he does look kind of exhausted. Maybe she really is too heavy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was more thinking the armor anyway. <laughs> uh, maybe just having an off day. <laughs> you gotta ride him next. It's a great day for that horse. If that's the case. Sounds good. <laughs> Gotta find the right entry. <laughs> no, this isn't a competition, girls. Wait, didn't you get the teleportation ring like first that episode of first season? Well, just to ask, I'm sure you'd be wow. <laughs> yeah, like a baby, I guess that works too. They have brought that up before. Have an air at some point. Oh, okay. Albedo's not a pure maiden at all. Wait, no, I, I misinterpreted that. No. Okay. So, apparently she's too pure. <laughs> Uh Well if Irons would just make a move, she would just we wouldn't have a problem here. Uh Well, he probably has less of a sex drive now that he's a bony man. Are you also a pure maiden? Yeah, I'd say with her uh with the little female servants that she summons, she obviously does loot things with them. Doesn't share that much in the anime itself, but I've heard that was the case in the light novels. <laughs> uh, that that that's an easy problem to solve. I'll admit, just go go there. Uh. <laughs> uh man fight 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 kiss 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 <laughs> let's just get to that step I think we should have some naked bonding, as girls do. Yeah, is that the one eyes was at? Well, I mean, he was at bath. 
<laughs> I'm scared. And we do see others of men again. No Lulu yet, but... <laughs> we got a Death Knight. I am curious where Lulu is. I kind of miss Lulu. Okay, that's mod. I think I may have mixed up the names of the two twins like I usually do. Good question. I... sure. Yes, it is. Is that sad? I don't think that's that sad. I mean, there are plenty of couples that are okay with not being able to have children. I mean, same-sex couples would have that problem even though they're the same species. In which case, there are options from there, but anyway, I'm not going to go on a tangent now. Oh. Okay. Now I'm definitely curious. <laughs> What's that blush about? What are you thinking? <laughs> uh, I have a feeling one of the girls are going to get it anyway. But I'm definitely curious now. <laughs> Practicing lines in front of a mirror because that's it's cool. <laughs> uh, don't worry, you're cool no matter how you do it. I think the first the first one was better. Silence. Yeah. To overload. I mean, you've been doing a good job for, you know, two or three seasons, so it's it's cool. I mean, people are already happy to serve you. I don't see the problem. Uh, we yeah. Let's let's take a vacation. Got my magic box. I'm just gonna assume that's a thing he does daily. Okay. Albedo has made her break her way back. <laughs> he really was trying too hard. Uh, you are so cool. I ain't still let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh. <laughs> uh. There's literally nothing on your face. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's as you do. Yes, they just they just admire you and respect you and love you just that much. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Head pat. And there we go. I was waiting for that head pat. I would love to have comrades that were this loyal.
<laughs> uh, of course he has your name, you're really cute. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, dial, dial it back a bit before you uh, make some people jealous. Or soil themselves. <laughs> You're the only one left, yeah. Buka Buka Chagame is missed though. I think that was the voice actress one. <laughs> Uh, man, I'll bet it's just. <laughs> You're more than welcome to. And she is so tight. He is so tiny. Oh, here we go. I think that she finally finished. Oh, gee. Okay, apparently she can't wait. <laughs> No, there's no need at all. Go for it. Uh, 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 my... <laughs> uh, <laughs> protect your master from the succubus. <laughs> no one's gonna stop me. Oh god. Uh, you, you are no match. Uh... <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> just what is even happening in that room? <laughs> that I could not think of a better way to end off the episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, freaking six, whatever she was called back there with her eyes tearing up. Just, <laughs> oh god, uh, I miss this show. <laughs> Well, one way or the other, Albedo's gonna fix that if that purity problem. Uh. Oh, so it's not quite over. Uh, clearly, I have to take a path now. That's a good point. You could probably phrase that better. Oh wow, even Mara's there. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a pretty thick wall, I doubt it. Yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah, if you really wanted to, you could just say, do it, ladies. And you would all happily do it. <laughs> yes, I shall go over there and have a word with all those naked girls. Um. Apparently, someone's going for a bath. <laughs> Don't break the bath. <laughs> well, everything needs a guardian. Lucifer. <laughs> Why is there a star in the name? I'm sure lots of people are hard right now. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> But I always have my weapon. So that was the first episode of the third season of Overlord, and it was a great first start to the season. I, I thoroughly enjoyed pretty much every minute of that episode. Okay, so we started off with everyone in the the uh, the throne room, and he was talking to a couple of them specifically, like uh, starting off with Sevis and Solution, pretty much saying, "Hey, you performed well last time. Let's uh, let's talk rewards. What do you want?" And then they're like. Oh no, just serving my lord and master Irons is more than enough for me. And all that is like, okay, sure, whatever, I, I got that, but just give me something something to give you. I, I, it's, it's a bit of, bit of a problem for me if you always just sound like that, because then I feel like I'm just, it's, I feel like this is a sweatshop, as he said. But yeah, eventually he 
requested something, but of course it was for Tsubane, clothes and stuff for her, and he's going on a date with her, and, and stuff like that, because that was obviously a ship that was introduced in the last season. They even kissed at least once, if I remember correctly, and it was, yeah, good, good for Sebus. Sebus had some pretty good moments last season in general, I'd say he was really got to shine that season. To nobody's surprise, Solution just wanted humans to, to, to play with, you know, that's... That's what she does. She's kind of a, a sadist like that and doesn't not a big fan of humans. That point was definitely driven home last season with Sebus and Swade and the differences and how they wanted to deal with that whole situation. But we also had Entama who was there and I think what she wanted for a reward was like the voice of Evil Eye or something like that or to, to be the one to, to, to kill her if that time ever comes for that. Something like that in her voice. It was, it was something like that because she obviously had some issues uh, with that. Because if I do remember correctly, Evil Eye was using a bunch of insecticide magic on her, so I can definitely see her holding a grudge, because that was easily the most damage she has taken in the entire series. So, yeah, if, it's like, hey, if there ever comes a time where we need to kill this girl, just give me the order. I'll, I'll do it. Just no questions asked. I'll, I'll, I'll kill her slowly and painfully. We get to see Ayn's taking a bath, which I'm sure is something many people wanted to, to see. And we learned that it's a bit difficult to wash his body, partly because it's so large and it's so bony and... Probably had to worry about stabbing yourself with a bone. So yeah, it's a little bit difficult, and apparently he finds slime baths to be good for that and to clean every nook and cranny of his body. I'm sure plenty of people, everyone in that Nazareth could probably be more than happy to help him clean if he asked, but apparently he decided this was the best way to go, and yeah, I can't really argue with that if uh, if that's his opinion. We got to see some stuff with some maids talking to each other and Beta as well, kind of playing with them. Uh, they call her, you know, by her other name, Lupris Singy Gagabugu in the series, but I find Beta easier to say, so that's usually what I end up calling her. But, uh, yeah, somebody was looking for her because they were supposed to eat together. I guess she forgot or something, and the penguin was getting choked out because of it. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting situation. Or uh, all together outside, and yeah, Shelt had Albedo summoning a bicorn, I think they called it, which a little bit different, different than a unicorn, like a more evil version of a unicorn, I guess. And she was having difficulty riding it. Because, as we found out, they it's the opposite of a unicorn. I, I initially jumped to conclusions and mis misread something there, but I corrected myself pretty quickly. They were saying that unicorns require a pure maiden, and bicorns require pretty much that pure maidens not, are not allowed to ride him. So, yes, Albedo, despite being a succubus, is still a pure maiden, which is a very, very odd thing. The kind of thing you would only ever see in an anime. But, uh, yeah, because the guy that she wants to have lewd fun times with has never called her to his bedchamber, so it's, she's never really had a chance to fix that problem. And even before this little scene, we had her touching her belly, heavily implying that she wants Ainz to give her a baby as something special for just for her. You know, some people get books or whatever, Did she gets a baby, I guess that's her line of thinking there. But yeah, so basically, yeah, they're not able to, to ride the bicorn because of that. Albedo brings up the brings up the idea, hey, I'll shelter, what about you? And we found out, I mean, I kind of already knew that, but yeah, she has experience with the same sex because of those, her household, members of her household, those females, I, I don't, there's a name for them, I'm sure, but you know what I mean, that she summons and can, like, kill to, to power herself up, like, uh, not exactly, not, not like the little ones that she summoned in the fight with Ides in season one, where she just kept stabbing them to absorb their health, that epic fight, just the more normal looking ones, the... I guess I'll we'll call them concubines. I can't think of a better name for them. But those things, yeah. She's had plenty of experience with them, but nothing beyond that. Now, apparently, Demiurge is doing breeding experiments, trying to work out humans breeding with non-humans. Uh, I'm a little bit curious what that's about, what the reasoning behind that is, if there's a specific goal in mind with that. Uh, it, I really don't know what it could be. Uh, it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, I suppose it's research worth doing, but I'm just kind of curious how that will come into play later. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it will in some capacity, I'm just kinda... I, that got me curious exactly why that was brought up. Now, that one information circular thing, uh, how are they translated that? I'm a little bit curious exactly what that says, because I think all we got so far was just saying that, hey, floor guardians, don't, don't give this to the female floor guardians, because reasons, so I'm definitely curious exactly what that's about. I don't think we found out what that was in the episode itself. I'm pretty sure we didn't. We just they just had uh, Mar uh, Mara blushing while while reading it. That got me curious. I'm very curious what that's about now. Hopefully that's uh, it's very entertaining. But yeah, one way or the other, we should find out at some point. The scenes of Ayn's trying very hard to be a cool leader for Nazrik were amazing. I just I love those scenes. Like silence. Yeah, trying to dramatically remove his cape and stuff as he's sitting down. It's like. 
Yeah, he's he's definitely the one that created that uh that one guardian. <laughs> of course, there's always been kind of a concern of his because he did grow up just a normal guy in the normal world playing a video game in his free time. That's that is who he was for most of his life. And then suddenly one day he was put into a real position of absolute authority over a, a lot of people in a strange land that he's unfamiliar with. That is honestly a lot of pressure, a lot of stuff to deal with to have all to throw that just to have all thrown at you at once. So that it does make sense that it would take quite a while to really fully adjust to your new lifestyle like that. I don't think I could have done it anywhere near as well as he did. In fact, I'm sure I couldn't. So the fact that he's come a long way does definitely definitely is impressive. He's obviously made some mistakes along the way. He's a, he's admitted as much, but obviously the whole issue with Shaltier was his, mostly his own negligence. But, you know, he's uh, he's doing his best. He's doing much better than I could have done. I'm sure better than a lot of people could have done. So, yeah, I think he's maybe worrying a bit too much. I think he's he's fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. It'll, it'll all work out. So, now, in the one scene when you had Ainz having a bit of a talk with Made about everything, about his, uh, his feelings about him and his comrades and, you know, all that good stuff with the head padding and the picking up. Albedo, she was getting more and more excited, like you could tell even though even the parts that were not focused on her on the camera, you could still tell just she was getting more and more riled up. And until eventually that just reached its maximum point's boiling point and she just went after Ryan's and said, you know what, I put up with this for two full seasons, we're in season three, I still do not have a baby inside of me, You're, we're gonna fix this right now, Ayn, so get down, we're, we're doing this. And that's pretty much what you did. Nobody was going to stop that. So, yeah, that scene was just amazing. I just, I love that scene. That was, uh, that was a really good way to start the third season. But uh, the final season, which we got out for the ED, I don't know how serious I'm even supposed to take this scene. But yeah, we were having some bath shenanigans with something going on in the female bath. We technically didn't see any of it. Uh, but yeah, there was definitely something over there that I guess we need to help with. But yeah, obviously, you had some people who were hoping for a that peeping hole in the wall so they could look at Ions in the bath. I don't know why. There's not really anything to see on Ions' body. It's literally just a bunch of bones, but I guess one bone in particular she wants to see? Question mark? I don't I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't see why they couldn't just all just bathe together one big mixed bathing bath. I'm pretty sure most of them would be okay with that. I, I mean, they're all definitely okay with Ions seeing them naked. And I doubt they care too much about the, the other employees seeing them naked. I mean, they're, they're all... I doubt anyone in this, this Nazareth is super shy is kind of what I'm saying there, but yeah, it's, that's that's how it goes. So that's about all I had to say on the episode. It was a uh, great, like I said a couple times already, it was a great start to season three. I would say it was even a better start than the start we got in season two, uh, where it kind of started us off with five minutes political intrigue stuff with other countries and took forever just to show Nazareth stuff. Like uh, that, so yeah, I'd say it was a stronger start than we had for season two, in my opinion. I'm sure we'll get more into political stuff in this season later on. They're just not gonna front load that like they did with season two, which is which is which is great. And you know, this is off topic, but whenever I start recording, I always make sure I'm in the middle of the frame. And yet, for some reason, I always end up you know not in the middle of the frame. Ugh. So it just that bugs me a lot. You would be surprised how difficult it is to stay actually in the middle unless you're like deliberately trying to be a statue. But anyway, like I said, good stuff. Let me know what you what you think. How let me know how excited you are to have this wonderful series back. What you think of the start of the series this season? What you're hyped for? Obviously, no spoilers or anything for you light novel readers out there. But uh, yeah, just let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching, and thank you, Snoky, as well as everyone else, for doing what you can to support the channel. It means a lot to me, and I hope we can continue to grow the channel together. If you want to do more to support the channel, then you can become a patron on my Patreon and get cool rewards like early access to certain videos. Have a good one.